In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Petzvel 85mm f2.2 on my GH5 with the Speed Booster XL. I got this lens way back when it was on Kickstarter for 400 US dollars and this is a hipster lens. Now all the Lomography fans out there watching this video right now are probably yelling FUCK YEAH! But hear me out first, okay? First, let's talk about build quality. The entire body of this lens is made out of solid brass and combined with the vintage Petzvel design, this is one lens that will surely draw attention. And I know some people don't like the Petzvel design, but personally, I'm a fan of it. In fact, it is the main reason that made me want to buy this lens in the first place. It is a manual focusing lens, and you focus by turning a dial at the side of the lens. I'm not really a fan of this method of focusing as I prefer the focus ring method, but that's just me. To change apertures, you slot in different aperture plates into a slot on the lens. Apart from the standard aperture plates, you may also slot in special aperture plates, but more on that later. Anyway, I think I've waffled on long enough. Let's take a look at image quality. For this test, I'll be mounting the Petzvel 85mm f2.2 on the GH5 with the Speed Booster XL. So, one look at the image and it's clear that this isn't a sharp lens. Sure, you can argue that the center is decently sharp, but overall, it's not a sharp lens. Which is to be expected. This is, after all, a lens that is made to emulate the Petzvel design from the 1840s. So, you will see a lot of the optical flaws from that era, like the vignetting and the soft corners. Lomography also advertises that this lens produces a swirly bokeh. But in all my tests, I haven't seen any swirliness in my bokeh. Speaking about bokeh, remember I mentioned earlier that you can insert special aperture plates? Well, depending on the shape of the aperture on those special plates, you can alter the shape of the bokeh balls. This is quite an interesting feature. Bokeh is generally pleasant, but depending on which special aperture plate you are using, your results may vary. Flaring is problematic on this lens. Not only do you lose some contrast, but in extreme cases, you'll even see some ghosting. But as usual, flaring doesn't really bother me that much. Next, let's look at sharpness. Wide open, the lens is soft. It's almost as soft as the Canon 50mm f1 that I reviewed previously. Stopping it down one stop to f2.8 and the lens becomes significantly sharper. Stopping it down further to f4 and you'll get a bit more sharpness. This little improvement in sharpness continues as you stop down further until f8. Beyond that, I don't really see any differences at all. So, in conclusion, it's just like what I said in the beginning. The Petzval 85mm f2.2 is a hipster lens. Fuck yeah! 
You don't buy this lens because it's sharp. You buy it because of its creative features. Features such as the custom-shaped bokeh balls, the vintage soft corners, and the swirly bokeh if you could ever get it to work. Now, I know it seems like I'm ripping on this lens. You're goddamn right. But honestly, I really love this lens. I had a great time shooting with it. And for $400, I guess I can't complain. Until next time, see ya. Next time on the Alex Rex Vlog.